let's go to Bill Gross and get some perspective on this. This is PIMCO team. Uh, really looks at all these different credit grades. We welcome uh, Bill Gross of uh, PIMCO. Bill, good evening. Thank you, Tom. I want to focus immediately on the news here of ECB and, of course, the G7 statement that was just uh, brought out. Not so much how PIMCO reacts uh, to this, but when I look at the number, Royal Bank of Scotland suggesting over a trillion U.S. is the kind of impulse to Italy and Spain. What does that signal to you to see that size of salvation by the ECB? Well, we're not sure of the size, but I think it's significant in terms of their program. I mean, there is a bazooka here and perhaps a, an arsenal of bazookas, maybe howitzers as opposed to bazookas. It's very heavy ammo nonetheless. You know, what uh, Trichet has spoken to tonight and indeed on Friday um, was that they would uh, implement a significant bond purchase program for Spain and Italy. Those are the, the two big ones, so to speak, as opposed to the little ones. And uh, to the extent that those numbers, I'm not sure those are our numbers, we're expecting perhaps two to three billion dollars a day in terms of purchases and how many days and weeks that continues, I'm not sure. They might eventually have a, a, an actual interest rate target in mind, Tom. We're not sure of that either and they probably won't divulge it, but you know, now at six percent for those ten-year bonds in Spain and Italy, perhaps as low as five or four and a half percent is their ultimate target. Well, Bill, you come to us from one of the most famous rooms at investment. It is where PIMCO uh, has their forum meetings. You and your other staff are as connected as anybody out there. Simply, how do you think your contacts will respond Monday in Asia, which is right now, Monday in Europe, and Monday in the United States? If you were to gather them together in the meeting set behind you, how will they respond this Monday? Well, I think uh, you know, overall the, the most important impact will be from a currency standpoint. We're not seeing that uh, tremendously tonight in terms of the dollar, but when you put all these pieces together, the ECB action in terms of supporting uh, the whole of Euroland, when you look forward to the next few days in terms of the Fed, in terms of what they might do to, to ease uh, interest rates to a certain extent, um, you know, those in combination, in addition to S&P's downgrade, which speaks to the longer-term uh, vulnerability of the United States, put all that in a package, and it's the dollar, I think, more than anything well, that is vulnerable on the downside. Here's a single paragraph, folks, and what I read this weekend, this from the Telegraph in the United uh, Nations. Let's bring it up here. Alex Billias, the world is one collapsed southern European economy away from disaster and crying out for American leadership, and Washington gave us Another committee. Bill Gross, would you serve on the super committee if asked? <laughs> well, of course, but uh, uh, not to be asked for sure. Um, yeah. You know, I think the committee concept, however, is a kick the can uh, type of action. Uh, what we saw here in, over the past week in, in, t in terms of the resolution of the debt crisis was, you know, perhaps a $25 billion reduction over the next 12 months in terms of uh, a, a deficit and perhaps over the next several years of uh, $500 billion to, to perhaps a trillion. Not much. You know, we, we've talked right. in the past. Asked Tom about the, the total liabilities of the United States being not twelve trillion dollars in terms of actually printed treasuries, but as much as sixty trillion dollars in terms of people walking. I, I call them debt, D E B T, debt men walking, and that's Medicare, um, that's Social Security, that's Medicaid, all in combination in terms of a present value. So this country has an enormous problem. It's not just a twenty-five billion dollar. It's not just a one to two trillion dollar problem. A basic question, Bill, and sometimes you and I get too fancy. You just mentioned a lot of promises, $60 trillion of promises uh, that we have. When are the Chinese not going to show up? When is the marginal foreign buyer of our debt going to just say enough? Well, they won't show up when it doesn't serve their best interest. Um, you know, they're beginning to sense, and I'm sure they've sensed for a number of years now, that they're beginning to sense that the U.S., has a number of weapons to use against them in, in terms of their uh, purchasing of treasuries, and that would be ultimately low interest rates relative to the 
rate of inflation, in other words, financial repression. And to the extent that the U.S. continues to employ that, it becomes an increasing cost for the Chinese. Now, you know, their number one priority, of course, has been to put their people to work. In effect, the whole world is trying to put their people to work, but the Chinese especially. And so what they've done is to fix their currency on a relative basis to the dollar, to buy U.S. Treasuries in doing so, and to put their people to work. When all of a sudden those Treasuries yield them nothing and become vulnerable from the standpoint of the dollar currency-wise, right. then there might be something in the works. And I think that, uh, Tom, is perhaps the most significant rebalancing effort here. I mean, the ECB can buy bonds. Uh, the U.S. can do another QE, two and a half. But if and when the Chinese basically revalue their currency significantly, then that is a rebalancing effort that might ultimately put a foundation under the global economy. When, when you look at all of the mix of this this evening, all of the news flow that we've seen, Bill, one of the questions is what is the knock-on effect of a full faith and credit downgrade? What does this mean for our towns, our cities, our municipal debt? What does this mean for Italy? Is there a knock-on effect from the reserve holder, the, the, the superpower of economics? If we're downgraded, does everybody else expect to ratchet down here soon? Well, I think that is one of the problems, um, you know, to the extent that France or, you know, some of the inner core actually of, of Euroland become vulnerable with their AAA, uh, then it becomes a successive waterfall on the, on the way down. It doesn't mean, however, that, uh, that money moves elsewhere because, in fact, there's no other place to go to the extent that the United States and other uh, liquid AAA uh, countries such as Japan, such as France, such as Germany, such as Canada, Australia, uh, mm -hmm. to the extent that some of those are vulnerable, then uh, you know there, there's little uh, room to to maneuver. And so uh, the U.S. at double A plus does it make a difference? Yes, uh, perhaps 10 to 15 to 25 basis points immediately here. Does it make a difference to municipal credits? Yes, because those rates move higher as well. Right, Bill, I want to come back, but just 30 seconds uh, here. Just a, a real, real simple question uh, this evening. Do you blame S&P? They and the White House going back and forth. Are S&P the bad guys? No, they're the, they're the white hat people. Uh, you know, I've been criticizing them and Moody's and Fitch for a long time. Moody's and Fitch are still on the, uh, the S list, so to speak, but I think S&P has uh, demonstrated some spine. Uh, they finally got it right. They spoke to a dysfunctional political sp system. They spoke to deficits as far as the eye can see, and they're enforcing some discipline here, and my white hat is off to them. Very good. Bill Gross, we're going to come back. Bill Gross of PIMCO, his white hat. He's got that Davy Crockett essay he put out a few days ago. You can see it at PIMCO.com. Coming up, more with Bill Gross. James Chanos will join us as well. Nora Robini will be with us from Bangor, Maine. What is that about? John Bridjolson will join us as well from Armand Wolf and the former chairman of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, Christina Romer. It's a Bloomberg special report. Keep watching to our show on the nation's downgrade. Gross with us from PIMCO. We continue again, folks. Nora Rubini uh, with us here in a bit. Bill's going to race back to his house in Newport to watch the rest of the program, which we appreciate. Bill, gold is moving. A lot of other things aren't moving. Are you surprised by the relative stability in the markets? Well, I, I, I am. I'm, I'm a little surprised about the, um, the stock market futures. I, th I thought they would be relatively stable, too, but it, it appears not. I think the reason they're not is that the S&P downgrade is really fiscally contractionary. I mean, it, it, yes, it uh, perhaps raises credit spreads a little bit. Right. But, uh, what it really means going forward is, is that politicians and Congress and the U.S. will be um, beholden, uh, so to speak, to rating agencies and to, to reduce uh, the deficit, which is fiscally contractionary okay. and perhaps the wrong thing to do at this time. It sounds, Bill, like new normal talk. If we are contractionary, if we see J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, among others, bring down their GDP estimates to new normal levels, does that signal dis inflation or even not yet the whisper of deflation and is that a signal that chairman Bernanke will come in forget about Italy and Spain we'll get your QE two and a half well that's critical uh, you know are we turning Japanese so to speak are we moving back down to the zero line or below it I, I don't think so I, I think uh, chairman Bernanke has a, a good sense of uh, 
approaching deflation when we do it. Uh, I, I think he's salvaged the, uh, uh, the economy from the standpoint of reflating and inflating uh, to the extent that he's done it over the past two to three years. And, and so our forecast would be for 2% inflation going forward and perhaps if the, the ECB and Euroland joins in the party, uh, you know, perhaps we can, mm -hmm. you know, certainly uh, use that forecast for other parts of the globe as well in developed nation terms. Yeah, Paul Krugman, uh, Mr. Gross, always writing. Let's bring this up, if you would, Rex. This is an important note. This is from Goldman Sachs, is quoted by the professor from Princeton. This is Hotsius and his team. Our inflation forecasts have not changed much, but our conviction is increased. I like that. Our conviction has increased that the large and now growing output gap will result in significant renewed disinflation. Let's focus on that output gap, Bill. How do you get a nation restarted? Well, that's the critical question, and, and one that's misinterpreted. I, I think I was amazed at Senator Kerry, uh, you know, basically speaking to spending cuts delayed as they were, as opposed to tax increases. I think the uh, basically the topic has been co-opted by the the right. What we have here is not necessarily a debt crisis, but a demand crisis in which global aggregate demand is insufficient, basically, to put people to work, and it's critical to. To decide between the two because if we have a debt crisis then you have to balance your budget if we have a demand crisis then you have to stimulate spending and so uh, this is a Krugman argument that says you know don't uh, cut spending if anything increase spending what we would say is that if you're going to do that make sure it's in the right place because up until this point over the right. past two years the Obama administration in Congress has targeted consumption we need to target investment as opposed to the consumption. We need to become right. more productive as a global exporter. Bill, I want to say a personal question. You started out in the mailroom of the Pacific Investment Management Company. This was just a few years ago. With all the talk out there and all the hysteria, do you still have that American dream, not for the big companies making all the profits, but do you still have the idea of the American future for people starting in mailrooms, uh, say, this fall as they come out of college? You know, I hate to discourage that because obviously it's happened uh, in the, at the PIMCO mailroom and it will happen elsewhere in the future. But I, I, I think that the, um, the rationale that basically says that you can uh, start at the bottom and become a, a billionaire, you know, over a period of time, um, you know, that, that, that's a, obviously always been a rare occurrence, but it's been something that's driven uh, the United States going forward in terms of their policy. To the extent that we can temper that a little bit, to, to the right. extent that we can simply say, um, mm -hmm. you know, let, let's, let's have a moderate growth, let's have a moderate uh, success uh, forecast right. instead of you know these extremes which tend to 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 put the emphasis on uh, capital as opposed to labor right we're gonna have to leave it there bill gross we thank you for coming in on this sunday bill gross of pacific investment you, management Tom. company